What's that, Monty? Road trip? Okay, let's go. Come on, Zeph. Come on, let's go. Go. What's up, buddy? Come on, go. There, we're up early in the morning. What are we doing? Going on a road trip? That's what Monty said. We're going on a road trip today. No trailer, though. No trailer today. Well, maybe later. Maybe later, yeah. Maybe later, huh, Monty? Turn are you? left to Kmo Drive. Monty, are we on a road trip? It's very said, does it include cows? Yeah, there may be some cows on this trip. You never know. 450 feet at the end of the road, turn left to Town Line Road. This is going to be a little bit of a different video for us. This doesn't involve the trailer and camping, but I think it'll be interesting, anyways. So In stay tuned. Miles turn right. Stay tuned as we give you more information as we get going. Hey everybody, welcome back to Zephyr Travels, and I'm Randy. And I'm Diane. And we got a little story to tell you. The other day we got up pretty early. Yes, we got up and we're out of the house by about 6.30 a.m. and headed south into Pennsylvania. Yeah, we uh, drove all the way down to Philadelphia. Actually, the name of the town was Hatsboro? H H Hatbor Hatboro. Hatboro, yeah, Hatboro, no less. Hepburo, Pennsylvania, and we went there to buy a car. Or we went there to look at a car with the possibility of buying the car. Right, it wasn't a foregone conclusion that we were gonna buy this car. Um, but we got up, we packed the dogs up, and went on, oh, it was probably 350 miles or so. Road trip snack, Monty. into Pennsylvania, we made a stop at the rest area and everyone got rested and now we're about halfway to our destination. Well we're almost to the destination, figured we should stop and get some fuel before we uh, uh, get there just to make sure we're on a full tank so we know if we have to drive around or anything, you know, we've got a gas and everything for that. Gas is a little more expensive here in Pennsylvania than it is at home. We're down under three dollars a gallon, and here it's three thirty-two. So a little more expensive, but not terribly expensive. I don't know about where you live, but gas has been going down in price over the last few weeks, which is good. Always take a lower price on fuel. Yeah, we got to our location before one p.m. Yes, and that's with stops for gas and stuff. So it's right. like. Five and a half hours, almost six hours total. Driving, yep. Yep. And we went to look at this car that's sitting behind us, which we'll talk a little bit more about. And, well, the guy was really nice, so we bought it from. Yeah, it was just one of these little um, town dealerships. And not a lot of cars, but he did have the, this one that Randy got interested in. So we took a look at it and uh, checked it all out. Then we took it for a test drive, and uh, Randy was, you know, he was pleased with it. We talked about it a little, uh, figured out, you know, what it might need if we bought it, and the price was good. Yeah, and you looked at it. I mean, you, we both had, you know, some criteria that we wanted to look for when we went through it. And what I did is, because I know, you know, I could get too anxious about something that I want, and so I might not look as close. So I kind of told Diane, this is what you should look for. And she kind of made sure that I looked at these things and, you know, we went over the car and 
there's a few things about this car that's not perfect, but overall it was pretty good. Yeah, it was a, for an 89, which is how many years old? 35, 35. 35 years old. It is in good shape. The body's in good shape. The uh, paint is in good shape. It does need a little bit of cosmetic work, which we have a friend that will take care of it for us. And a few things mechanically wrong or repairs that Randy can take care of. So yeah, it was, you know, it turned out to be a good car and a good purchase. Right. So once we purchased it, we had to get it home and unfortunately Diane can't drive. You know, it was nice to take her along for company, but she wasn't much help in driving aspect of anything. So we had to rent a trailer, which was a new experience for us. We're here at U-Haul and we're gonna pick up one of these trailers over here to bring the car home. So I've got to go in and get the paperwork and get that taken care of and then we're going to get it hitched up and make the trip back to the car. Yeah, we rented it at U-Haul, a uh, car trailer. We had to go a little bit of ways away from the dealership to get to pick it up, but it all worked out. We got back to the dealership and uh, Randy and with some help from the people at the dealership loaded up the car and uh, yeah, it was about an hour's drive to the U-Haul place. We actually had it reserved at a U-Haul location. It was only 10 minutes away, but they didn't actually have it. So they moved our reservation to another U-Haul place, which was about a half hour away. And But it was no big deal about renting it. And we got it picked up, got it to the uh, dealership, and then loaded the car up and drove her home. Yeah. Well, this is what we bought. 89 Thunderbird Super Coupe. It's the performance model. And uh, kind of a cool car. Hopefully we'll have a lot of fun with it. Now, got to re repeat the drive and head home. It was a nice day for a drive. The weather was good. And uh, there was um, quite a bit of road construction on I-81. Yeah. Down into Pennsylvania. But by the time we drove it home, you know, all that work had stopped for the day. Our, my only concern was there was quite a few deer alongside oh, wow. of the road. Yeah. And so, you know, you just never know what they're going to do. But fortunately, they stayed up on the side of the road, actually up on the, the grass area. And uh, we're more interested in eating than uh, coming down onto the highway. Thankfully. Thankfully. Yeah. And then once we got back into New York State, um, we really didn't see any, I didn't see any deer on the side of the road. No. Well, it was, it was later then too. I think when we were seeing the deer, you know, it was right around sunset. Right, right. But I kept my eyes open because they dart out into the highway and you just never know. Yeah. Yeah, through Pennsylvania, they were like right at the shoulder of the road eating grass. And you kept wondering, you know, are they going to get the idea to run across the road, which they couldn't do because there was a medium barrier that they wouldn't be able to get across probably. If right. they even made it through the traffic. But they could have come on our side of the road. So yes. I, yeah. We don't know about the other side of the road, but for our side of the road, yeah, we saw plenty of them. Yep. So, should we tell them about what we bought? Oh, yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> so, Randy, Randy, can, Randy can tell you about the car. So, this is a 1989 Ford Thunderbird Super Coupe. And so this was the top of the line Thunderbirds for the year. 89 was the first year for this body style. It was a brand new body style for Ford. Um, and this car, when Ford brought it out, had the best of everything, to, you know, from engineering perspective. They, they've got, uh, they redesigned the suspension. It shared no parts with any other car. It was very unique. It's got a very unique styling to it. Um, it I, to me, it looks very contemporary. Being a car that's 35 years old, when you look at it, you don't think it's 35 years old. Um, this this one that we put, bought here only has less than 40,000 miles on it, so it's very low mileage for the year. Actually, it's like it, it's almost like a thousand miles a year um, on right, it. So it's right. obviously not been driven a lot. It's been stored. It's very clean. There's no rust on it. Um, mechanically, it seems to be in very good condition. Um, we've been driving around a little bit since we've gotten back and it's really done very well. Uh, we haven't put a very lot of miles on it. Obviously we towed it back, so we didn't put that 350 miles on it, but it's been pretty good as far as driving around. It's got good tires on it and everything. 
and it's just for us it's going to be a, a fun car yeah yeah it'll be something that we will drive when we're when we are at home and you know just a kind of a fun car not a not a daily driver but just something that you know when we want to take it out we'll have it yeah yeah and then we will take it to car shows and and some things maybe we're take you guys along because there's a big national car show that we used to go to before that we haven't been to in a number of years and maybe we'll take you guys along for it so put in the comments if you want to see more about this car in future videos we will do some other stuff with it obviously it's a little bit different than our normal travel stuff that we do but kind yeah, of fun a little bit different that we wanted to do and uh, just show kind of show it off being is that it is a vehicle that's 35 years old and uh, yeah, if I'm sure a lot of you have interest in these older models and probably perhaps even own one. Yeah. So. Yeah, I like, I mean, I have an interest in these early 90s, late 80s car, Ford cars, because, you know, performance Ford cars. This one is a Super Coupe, and that means it has the supercharged uh, V6 motor. Now, Compared to today's car, your average car that you buy off the lot probably has as much or more power than this car does. But back then, cars didn't have a lot of power because of emissions and such. So this car has 210 horsepower, which was a lot from a V6. Today, our Ford Focus has 250 horsepower. So you can take that as perspective, but it's really a real nice personal luxury car is really what it is. It's still, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. It's a, it'll be a fun car. Yeah, not something you would take to the grocery store, but yeah, a fun car. So leave us a comment. Let us know if you like this, what you think of this video. It's a little bit different for us and trying some different things. Right, and share with us if you do own an older car, the make and model, and uh, things you've done to it or what you do with it. Yeah, we'd love to hear about that. And if you want to see more videos uh, of stuff like this or more about this car as we keep it. We do have a, a list of things that we need to do to it to get it perfect, I guess is really what we're talking well, about. Well, close, close to perfect, right. I mean, a lot of people would just keep it like it is and be happy with it, but you know, we want to take it to the next level and really flush it out and take all care of all the little things that it needs. Right. So if you're interested in that stuff, let us know. We may come up with a way to make some videos on that in the future. So if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you choose to subscribe, yeah. And if you choose to, please subscribe to our channels uh, for travels. And hit that thumbs up so... No, uh, no. not thumbs up. Sorry. Hit the bell for notifications so that you're notified the next time we put a video out. Next one, probably more of the travel stuff and camping stuff than the car stuff. But we want to make sure that you follow along with us. And until the next time, guys, we we'll will... See you down the road. Take Bye. care. Bye. Let's not waste time. We'll take this slow. We've got miles behind us and miles to go so let's just break this down